The Phoenix Rising pregame show is brought to you by Reese's Dental Embraces. It's time for another dollar beer night here in the Valley of the Sun, and the stakes could not be higher for this one. Phoenix Rising FC welcomes second place Ian Russell and Reno 1868 here to Casino Arizona Field in beautiful Scottsdale. Free game, as always, presented by Reese's Dental. Tyler Terrence along with the ex-German pro, Devin Kerr, who's sitting about two and a half centimeters to my right. And Devin, as we take a look at the Western Conference standings, Phoenix and Reno sitting in first and second place, respectively. We have Fresno and the Monarchs going head-to-head -head tonight as well. Portland Timbers, too, in action tonight in addition to that. But the playoff picture is starting to mold and take form. Everything that's gone on over the course of the entire season is starting to break it up, especially right around the top of the Western Conference. T2 has an opportunity to jump ahead of the Real Monarchs, but how about Fresno? They are within striking distance with game in hand on Reno 1868 FC. The reason they're all relevant while Phoenix has gone on this ridiculous run, they've all put together some nice streaks as well. Ended, but still an opportunity to stay within striking distance of the boys up top. And anybody who's not living under a rock knows by now that Phoenix Rising 13 game winning streak, they've been unbelievable. However, Devin, over the past few games, it has not been as convincing as what we saw at the beginning of the streak. You asked me coming out of the Tulsa match, the one nothing victory on the road when they went down to 10 men, the Roughnecks, if you should be a cause for concern. Not then, now it is. You're three games into this cycle, have to find a way to get back to the beautiful movement we saw against the likes of OKC Energy and T2. What does this team have an opportunity to do? We've talked about goals for, goals against. Let's go after overall points totals. 2018 FC Cincinnati gets to 77. They obviously played four more games than the 2016 team of New York Red Bulls too. Oh, by the way, even though 69 points, regular season champion, and best of all, USL Cup. Well, let's look at a Reno side that Devin, since their game against Phoenix on Wednesday night soccer, they've been brilliant, but that hasn't been the case with almost every team that Phoenix has beaten on this streak. Most teams will suffer, but Reno, since that loss, have gone on a tear. When you take a look at the next five games of teams coming off a Phoenix game, what they have been able to do, 11 out of 17 get seven points or less. That is a ridiculous number. So when Phoenix takes you down, usually wither way into the night. That's not the case for Reno 1868 FC. Another thing to keep an eye on, they have not lost back-to-back -back games all season long. They're coming off a loss tonight. Well, it doesn't get much better than this. First and second place team in the Western Conference. Phoenix looking to make it 14 in a row. Reno looking to catch up to the best of the West at the moment. It's Phoenix and Reno when we come back. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a few years old or dinosaur old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. At Arizona Federal, our passion is to help out the community where you live and work because where you bank should make you feel good. Show your support for the home team with the Phoenix Rising Visa Debit Card. When you open a new account, you can score $100 just for using your card when you shop. How's that for an easy goal? Be a part of our commitment to the community. Arizona Federal Credit Union. Mobile Mini is a lockdown defender. Have peace of mind using Mobile Mini guarding all of your valuables on site, at home, or at your business. Mobile Mini storage containers are made of 100% steel and maximize your protection with our patented Tri-Cam locking system that is camera-proof, cut-proof, and drill-proof. Proud partner of Phoenix Rising FC.
Mark Allenton, our head referee, leads the two sides out of the tunnel and onto the field here at Casino Arizona Field in Scottsdale, Arizona. And tonight's game presented by Equality Health. Again, I'm Tyler Terrence, and sitting about two and a half centimeters to my right is none other than the incomparable Devin Kerr. And as these two sides with a big three points on the line tonight. Devin, we'll take a look at the starting 11 for Rick Schatz. What are we looking at? Just a one change. James Musa comes into midfield alongside Bicaro and Lambert as Aguinaga takes his seat. Kevon Lambert, this is the one, by the way, we're going to get into his first name later on and everything that's gone on with the PR group, but Lambert, they want him to be this swing number eight. They said offensively it has to be better. Now he gets his opportunity to shine tonight. Front three stay the same, back four the same. Zach Lubin, the main man in between the pipes. The visitors, what's this going to look like? Ian Russell said, coming off their loss to San Antonio, he was very frustrated, not necessarily that they were loaned so many players from San Jose, but that he found out so late. They had six in the starting lineup. You only have two tonight. He makes six changes. I would keep an eye on number eight. We'll see more. In this diamond formation that they play, he is going to have a massive amount of work, especially when the three for Phoenix Rising like to jumble around in the likes of Lambert and Beccaro. Matt Brissano in goal. Phenomenal goalkeeper coming over on loan. Gilbert Fuentes, the 17-year-old, will be at the top of that diamond with Sam Gleadle and Raul Mendiola, who's made stops at the likes of Los Dos and Los Angeles Galaxy as well before landing in Reno. Devin, we're a few minutes away from kickoff now. We talked about how Phoenix has been stumbling a little bit despite their 13-game winning streak. That's not an oxymoron. Meanwhile, on the other side for Reno, they've won seven out of their last nine. What are we expecting from tonight's match? Well, the biggest concern for Phoenix and what you should expect out of them is the beautiful movement we've seen going forward. The problem is, is they've really lacked that in the middle of the field. You and I have had multiple conversations. Rick Schantz has brought it up as well that the midfield three have to be better if they want to have continued success. When you challenge a diamond like this, you have the opportunity to be really good the ceiling is very high, but the bar can obviously drop down real quick as well. When you have talented guys like Lidl and Mendiola on the outside who really challenge you know, the likes of Solomon Asante and Junior Flemings, it makes it very difficult in transitional play. But look for the corners, because they'll bring the outside backs really high. Phoenix will look to pump balls at angle, down into the corner, and run with high speed. Well, the crowd is always raucous on Dollar Beer Night, but with the number two team in town, I have a feeling it's gonna be the loudest we've ever heard Casino Arizona Field as we're officially underway from the Valley of the Th Sun. Three points up for grabs. Phoenix looking to make it 14 wins in a row. Reno trying to slay the dragon. Reno coming off of that 4-1 drubbing against San Antonio FC. Devin mentioning the frustrations that Ian Russell had with regard to the personnel as Solomon Asante gets a very warm welcome into this one from Emra Clementa. Solomon Asante leading the Golden Boot Race at the moment with 16 goals. A lot of those have come off penalties and re received some flack on that topic, especially on social media from some of the pundits, but nobody's really going to bat an eyelash at how Solomon Asante puts the ball in the back of the net, and he certainly was able to do that yet again from the spot as the athletic trainer comes out and checks on the Ghanaian who's in a bit of pain to immediately start off this match, and that is the last thing that you want to see. And already, Joey Calistri is warming up just as a precaution. We'll see if that substitution comes to fruition, but it was an immediate shout from Emma Clementa and it wasn't anything dirty or malicious, but it was very physical. And letting Solomon Asante know that he wasn't going to have all that much time and space on the ball tonight. One of the long outlet passes we talked about, not necessarily direct into the corner, but to your point, center back setting a standard. And he's going to throw his weight around a little bit, and it just gets tangled up a little bit. Not a nasty foul by any means. And Solomon Asante to his feet. He is very much a fan favorite here. Not only for his production on the field, which came out in spades as the quickest player ever to reach double-double. That's double digits in goals and assists. But also his personality as well, Devin. He's just a fun guy to be around. by A.J. Cochran, sending it right into the path of Junior Flemings. Chance here, Solomon Asante trying to get there, but it's stabbed away by Duke LaCroix. And 
it's a poor mistake from Reno. And it'll be a corner the other way for Phoenix. Brought to you by our friends over at Carvana. And Mark Barsano has some organizing to do in the first three minutes or so. Immediately, you do see those long balls once again. First one to Solomon Asante on the challenge. Second one down into Junior Flemings. The quick transition is where you can get this team out of whack. 1868 FC pushed their outside back so very high. Could be a part of this movement going forward. The Eclipse one in. Don was trying to seal off the defender. Asante trying to bring it down, but hooked away by Reno and Duigi Mala will recycle. Nabuya back into the mixer. Better one by Musa. Trying to keep it in play. It'll be a Reno throw in. And let's take a look at tonight's Mayo Clinic injury report for both Ian Russell and Rick Schantz. Usual suspects for Phoenix, but we're being told that Alessandro Parigi and J.C. Johnson are getting very close to getting back on onto the field, full contact. Rick Schantz was pretty funny in telling us that that's a scary thought to have to then try to insert both Jason Johnson and Alessandro Rigi into already what's just a beyond competitive 18-man roster week in and week out. It does also give you coverage in situations like this. Worst case scenario, Asante isn't able to continue the match on. You have more components to help you go forward. And that's one of the things you got to keep an eye out for is making sure the confidence for all these guys is still at a very high level. When everybody's playing so well, you have to find rotation. Rick Schantz has been able to do that so far. Solomon Asante now, Dambuya to his right. John Baccaro making a run out of the midfield. Asante again, finding the Spaniard. Trying to slip it through, but it was a really tight window to find Adam John. All the way back from Matt Persano, and in the early going, Devin, you can tell that Reno just look out of sorts when they're trying to play out of the back. And that's a result of the Phoenix pressure. Junior Flemings on the turn, letting the ball do the work. Here comes the Jamaican. Great speed and strength. Still Flemings trying to put it on frame. Well, we've seen that particular move a number of times. The ball takes a deflection as Flemings was cutting into his right foot. Something that Rick Schott said maybe he did one few too many times in their most recent game. Keep an eye on the two in the midfield. Gilbert Fuente is not really dropping back on the defensive side. We said Will Seymour was going to be very active, but it's the cut in that throws him off a little bit here. Raul Mendiola doesn't follow through. Brent Richards doesn't get the pass off, and he hits this gray area where it's just loads of space for him to run into. Vaccaro on the corner, nodded away by Reno. Out to James Musa. He can't hit it from here. Flemings over for Asante. Just helps it along, hoping that Vaccaro can keep it in play. And last touch coming off of Reno while we have a moment. Let's take a look at tonight's All-Skill Uniform Report. Copper State Fridays for Phoenix. And Reno going with the classy all-whites. Uniform Report again brought to you by Allsco. Caro lofting one in again. Kevin Lambert rising for the header. And Devin, you brought it up during pregame. It has to be mentioned. Yeah. No, no favors and no new no, friends. No favors, no new friends. And I don't think any blame could be put on any two people, but I'm going to blame two people. Do it. Kevin Lambert yes. and Jose Bosch. Say it again. More so Kevin, though, but it's not his fault. We were told after all this time that Kevin Lambert, his name is really Kevin, it's not Kivon, which we've heard from Rick, we've heard from Patrice Carteron, we've heard from Jose, we've heard from basically everybody within the Phoenix camp, and now all of a sudden, Kevin Lambert is what comes out, and the reasoning behind why it's taken so long is Kevin said, oh, it didn't really bother me. Wish I had his patience. <laughs> the amount of times my name was mispronounced. But it's funny, because when you talk about the nicknames, it's Kev, 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 but that's easy to do when the pronunciation is still the way it was. When it was Kivon, but so now you get an opportunity, you change things up a little bit. Okay, great. I'd like to change this up and push Reno back out. But I get it. He's got that laid back style personality. It's island time, man. It's just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Go with the flow. It's cool. But finally, you get it right. And from this day forward, and we will do our best, it is Kevin Lambert. I will slip up at least once tonight. I already did it in the lineup. Yep. There you go. Some of that was on purpose, but still. Was it? Save that answer for a, la for a later time. Here's Amadou Dia. Vaccaro trying to nod it along for Asante. Nabuya bringing it down. Lost the ball for a moment. Could be dangerous here. Reno breaking out 3v1 if they hurry. 
Out to the right, Corey Herzog, plenty of time and space. He lets it go, and Dabuya gets in the way of it. That's great recovery from Mustafa Dabuya, who gave it away out on this right flank and hustled all the way back to get in front of the Corey Herzog shot. Mendiola now lofting it in, and then AJ Cochran forced to send it into the crowd, but that's exactly how they gave away the equalizer to El Paso. It was just a poor play at the back. This time it's Mustafa Dabuya on the right-hand side. How impressive from Sam Guido, though. Keep an eye on the tail end of this thing. When he knocks this ball to his right, the better look, go alone. AJ Cochran trailing back over. Just continue the run yourself. You drink the defender out even further, and then you can cut it back across your body. Gives him more space to work with. Instead, Corey Hartsock takes one touch and immediately is closed down. Marino. And the best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford, shop Arizona's largest selection of new Fords with no hassle, no pressure, and no nonsense. Sanderson Ford is America's most awarded Ford dealership for customer service. Shop Sanderson Ford. Corner's an outswinger. It's a good ball. Wasowski got a touch to it. Capero trying to clean it up. Plenty of work to do with two different Reno players hounding him, but did well to win the throw in for Phoenix. Pleasure from Sam Gleadel, 23-year-old from England in his second season with Reno. And Bersano has been splitting time. Corey Herzog is going to let it bounce, but it's offside. Bersano has been splitting time with J.C. Marcinkowski. 13th appearance for Bersano. Marcinkowski has 12. We've almost played about 10 minutes here in Casino Arizona Field. They actually spend a decent amount of time training with Matias Almeida's squad, San Jose. They'll bring them back for game days. And it's always kind of nice. It's an opportunity to continue at a good level and then not only help propel the team that you're playing for, Good result. Bring that level with you and raise everybody else's game. We don't let it bounce. John bringing it down. Fleming's now. Pressure by Mendiola. Frantic pace to this game. And not a clean one. One ball the other way. Herzog giving Luigi Mala some problems. He's very good at just brushing off the defender and using his body to his advantage. As A.J. Cochran with a clean step to strip Danny Masowski of the ball. Now Baccaro coming on the other end, but Phoenix give it away. Second poor giveaway in bad part of the field as Gleadle gets around Musa. Gleadle still with it. Herzog back for Gleadle. Good chance here, and it's just past the far post. Sam Gleadle right now having his way with the Phoenix back line and midfield, to be honest and creating an excellent opportunity, but it just skips past. Taking a page out of John McCarroll's book. Really well done by Gleadle coming all the way over from the left-hand side. Just rotates back over, not enough communication. In behind Amadou Dia, AJ Cochran, a bit slow to react. Might have taken a deflection, to be honest. It's great movement from Gleadle on the left-hand side, and it's one thing you don't necessarily see is where the outside mids will switch a lot. Other squads will tend to put that into their movements going forward, that it's not the case with Reno. You'll see them stay on their perspective sides. Raul Mendiola on the right, Toledo on the left. You will see Gilbert Fuentes rotate out of the middle a bit, but you have to be very disciplined on the defensive side of things in this shape. Ian Russell admitting that they are trying to institute some of the man marking that's going on with San Jose. It's a difficult process to take into effect. It says that intermittently they've been able to execute. Last week they tried it, and unfortunately the game just got away from them. Vaquero, running to Bouye in some space. Both teams can sort of tell now, want to slow this game down a little bit as Asante taken down from behind by Duke Lacroix. 25 year old from New Egypt, New Jersey. Three goals, three assists on the year. 
pretty solid stat line for your outside back. It is collegiate ball at University of Pennsylvania. It was a Quaker from 2011 to 2014. Vaquero going short for Asante. Here goes Zolo. John with a heavy first touch, put away by Gleadle. And Kevin Lambert with the handball. Too quickly for Gleadle coming on the other end. Sam Gleadle, a little bit of Arizona flavor actually for Ian Russell. Moved to the United States from England at nine years old due to his dad's job. And before going to the Real Salt Lake Academy, was with the Scottsdale Blackhawks. Abuya brings it down. Reno stepping to him yet. Musa put on a lot of pressure by Lacroix. And that's a second in a row in about 30 seconds for Lacroix. And he's going to get a stern talking to at the bare minimum for Mark Allerton. Allerton's going to put an end to this. Just too reckless of a challenge coming out of the back. Lovely change of speed from the outside back in Duke Lacroix, but unfortunately just gets away from him. Credit to James Musa to recognize the challenge is coming and to tear the brunt of it all the way to the ground. Luigi Mala out of the back. Takes a deflection. Asante tried to let it run through. Lacroix trying to get around Vaquero. Good defensive play for the Spaniard. Asante somehow able to sneak through. Now he lashes it all the way across the face of goal on Matt Persano. And it'll trickle out of play. Phoenix with a couple of fortuitous bounces, but unable to connect. As nobody was following the Solomon Asante cross, but good hustle. This is where he's at his best, making something out of nothing. Quick little turn. Center back rotating all the way back over, and Emmer Clementa just slides it in between his legs. And how many times have we seen that ball knock back across and you've got Adam John or Junior Flemings coming all the way on the back post? I'm not a huge fan of that for the referee. The ball and the foul were displaced by about three to four yards. Just let him play. If you put it down and play quickly. Allenton, though, who has dealt with the early challenges from both Phoenix and Reno. Pretty solid fashion. Zach Lubin off the one towards the area of the field where Junior Flemings is located, but nothing coming of it. This is one in for Baccaro, a little bit out of his reach. Gleadle got a touch to it. Fuentes trying to find Corey Herzog, who came all the way back, and the offside flag is going to come up. You can tell a number of Reno players are just camping out in that Phoenix back line, hoping that one of these runs is going to be timed perfectly. If Raul Mendiel is smart here, he's in. He has the opportunity to just sit tight on that back line and then spring in action. Plenty of pace, and you better believe in a foot race, he would most likely get out in front of A.J. Cochran, especially on that far left side. Now, if you want to go against Luigi Mala, that's a totally different argument. We've already seen Sam Guido cutting in, and Viola trying to go one-on-one -on, -one on that far right side. That's what it's going to be. We said it'll be quick balls coming out of the back. The outside back's really high, and to be fair, really haven't done themselves any favors. Once again, just gifting the ball to the opposition. Pulled up by Reno to just continue to play this high line. Some of that intermittent press you see out of Phoenix Rising taking full effect for Ian Russell's boys. Orly played by Seymour. Lambert. Vaccaro over for Amadou Dia. A little bit of space to play. Pushes is now wide for Flemings. Numbers arriving for Phoenix. Flemings lofting it in. Cover from Lacroix and Sam Gleadle. 
to Buya. Goes down quickly by Herzog. Shots, who is really pleased with the way that Luigi Mala was spraying the ball out of the back. Over the last couple of games, Flemings, Lambert trying to go back for his compatriot. Scissor kicked away. Lambert really well done to control the ball in that tight a space. But a bit too much on that from Mustafa Dambuya. Phoenix Rising is pleased to have Phoenix Brazas as tonight's first watch ball kids. Be sure to visit www.firstwatch.com to find your neighborhood first watch, the daytime cafe. Fuentes in for Seymour. Shake that one out, forcing Matt Persano into a mistake. 26-year-old from Chandler, Arizona. Here comes Solo. Ends up being a triple team in the likes of Fuentes, Clementa, and Gleedle. Dia. Pushes it along for Flemings. Hamadou wants to get involved in the attack. Flemings still with it. Cuts inside. Good effort here. And Junior Flemings connects on yet another goal. He just decided to do all the dirty work himself. Phoenix lead 1-0 over Marino. Similar to what you're getting out of Sam Gleedle on the left for Reno 1868, Junior Flemings implementing the same tactics on his side. It's that quick little cut and look, if they're gonna give you the space, take it. Mismatch once again, sliding all the way back over. Gilbert Fuentes, we said, defensively, he had not dropped back a lot. This time he comes all the way back, but there's confusion. He tries to slide it over to Seymour. Seymour doesn't step fast enough. Junior Flemings recognizes there's space to be had, and he sees the far post, just puts this one to bed. Junior Flemings with his 10th goal this season. Now three different Phoenix players in double digits in the goal department. Solo with 16, Adam John with 11, and now Junior Flemings with 10 goals and seven assists in the 2019 campaign. And after 20 minutes of play, Phoenix have the breakthrough. Important for Reno here to stay within Arms reach if you can. A lot of times, whether you go up by one in Phoenix's case or Reno now trailing, you'll always hear from managers next five minutes, next five minutes, they want their boys to stay focused and do not let a game get away from them. So many times before, you'll see a team go back a second, everybody's heads drop, and the next thing you know, you're chasing all over the place. Ian Russell will make sure that he has a conversation immediately to make sure they stay focused. Lemmings put one into the path of Akera, but it was just out of his reach as he thought that perhaps another Phoenix Rising counterattack was on the horizon, and it still might be. Dambuya. Asante on the first time, hoping for Flemings, but a good defensive play on the backside from Brent Richards. And now Phoenix are starting to cook a little bit. couldn't quite clean it up. Difficult task, the ball coming in from Baccaro. Masovsky had it broken up by Mustafa Dambuya. And here comes Reno with a lot of numbers on this left-hand side again, but electing to pump the brakes. Gotta get better movement coming out. And Mark Lamenta trying to find an outlet pass. I like the idea of stepping on it and starting over here. You don't want to turn this into a track meet. Open things up too much, you overexpose yourself. That's what we saw a little bit on the Junior Fleming's goal, where the communication just has to be better. Seymour brings it down and finds the youngster, who's 17 years of age, and Gilbert Fuentes. 
Lacroix working on Dabuya. Good pace from Lacroix, but better defensive prowess from Mustafa Dabuya, who not only denies the delivery, but avoids conceding the corner. And after a poor start, Dabuya starting to settle in. Here's Lacroix again. Lidl on the turn. He pokes one across, let run through. Masovsky here, but stood up by Cochran. Now Herzog trying to put it on frame, cuts off Cochran again. And AJ Cochran is grabbing onto that right knee. He is in some pain. He was barely upright once the second shot came in from Corey Herzog. And then quite literally, Herzog shot adding insult to injury. Corey Herzog puts his laces on this thing too. There's Galito once again, trying to find the trailing run. Muzovsky gets a shout on the backside of things. It's a great tackle on the initial one, and that's where it gets him. The little step in as this ball comes back across. Danny Muzovsky trying to get one off, but it's knee on knee, right on both of the boys, just knocking up against each other. Catches a stinger on that right side of his. that a magic spray can't fix for A.J. Cochran. Danny Masowski and company trying to find some sort of rhythm. Are you surprised at the disarrayed nature of Reno in the opening 25 minutes? No, especially not coming off of what we saw against San Antonio FC. And to be fair to them, yeah, I get it. It was a 4-1 game, but chatting with Ian Russell, and I agreed with him, Three of the goals were pretty much just, here you go, you pick us apart. They still didn't play well. You could tell that they were out of sorts. And then the double yellow card, Eric Calvillo picks the second one up in the 50th minute. You go down to 10 men. So when you're not playing well, then you make a mistake. You then have to chase the game a little bit. Some balls get pumped in the back of the goal and you're, you're sitting around going, wow, we're down four nothing. That really does something to you mentally. Coming off of that, how do you respond? You go down in the opening 20 minutes. Now you're chasing once again. The issue for them isn't going to be the chasing part. It's what do you do when you go the other direction? They're going to do a lot of running tonight. And a lot of it's going to be on the defensive side of the ball. You have to pick and choose your opportunities. So when you're going forward, when the ball gets sprayed through Raul Mandiola, you got to find a way to make sure that, that you're taking the most that you can out of that instead of that one or two extra steps early. You've shown already that you're good enough to get in behind this back line. It doesn't have to be every single time Phoenix comes offensively. You can come back slowly. You don't have to throw an uppercut every time they come at you. And as good as Phoenix has been on this 13 and quite possibly 14 game winning streak, they've shown time and time again to almost every opponent that they've played, they will give you opportunities just from giving the ball away at the back as they try to play probably one of the most possession-based styles of football within this league. As Dabuya does really well, but Caro now on the turn, wrong picks Fuentes. And James Musa just helps the train keep moving. And it's Amadou Dia now. Flemings has the lone goal tonight. 20th minute, Musa. Baccaro now, early delivery. Great ball, John, the diving header. Lambert trying to follow it up. Asante was waiting for it. But Brent Richards is first to it. And then the foul from Amadou Dia. How about that ball coming in from John Baccaro? delectable into that corridor of uncertainty. As a player, you're licking your chops the entire way when this gets whipped in. Really well done by John Baccaro. We talked about when he came in to this squad, that rotation out where Solomon Asante can now go inside, be the recipient of some of these balls being whipped in. Yes, it's a second ball in this situation, but it allows John Baccaro to get in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and most of the time, he's going to win those. Let's it run out of play as Rick Schantz back up off the bench. Rarely will he be sitting down, Rick Schantz, and he has just been unbelievably pleased with the fight and the determination, but has also kept his expectations extremely realistic. And over the past few games, I mean, you and I haven't even asked him about the winning streak because it's something that he really doesn't enjoy talking about or really wants to talk about because it's simply game in and game out for them. See a couple of scores coming around, still nil-nil between Fresno and the Monarchs. T2 and OKC Energy FC already two goals before the half-hour mark. 
T2 are trying to claw their way back into the standings. I mean, you talk about a team that had their soul ripped from them after the game against Phoenix. And right on cue, the commentators curse in full effect, even though we're thousands of miles away from where they're playing that game. T2 just went up 2-1 over OKC Energy FC. And they were one of those teams, we mentioned 11 out of 17, that got seven points or less. Their next five matches after that 4-2 comeback here, 0-3-2, oh, only two points. The only team that was worse than them was Colorado Springs. And Los Dos, right at the bottom of that barrel. They've recovered recently, They've drawn a win in their past three, but they were on a stretch of seven games without a victory. It's really difficult for Cameron Knowles' voice, but massive amount of talent and kind of interesting how they were on the downside, but Portland Timbers themselves have been on such a good run. And they did pull some of their players away. You're not seeing Marvin Laurier there anymore. Eric Williamson hasn't been involved in the midfield play as much. Ball clipped in. Herzog forced to use his head, but it's offside. There's a new hero in town, and she's Gotham City's only hope. Batwoman premieres on your Phoenix CW Sundays this fall. done by Reno defensively. Not allowing that to happen. Really good shape on the defensive side, but an eye on the middle still a bit weak-minded here. You can see John Vaccaro on your narrow screen. Kevon Lambert behind him. James Musa just to the left. It's got to be some constant rotation. Side to side here. Really challenge them. Mendiola has now started tucking himself in. That's smart. Lambert did well to find Vaccaro. He thought about letting it go and then elected for something a bit more clever. Dia keeps it in play, allows Junior Flemings to be the first one to it. Moose has done an excellent job dictating the pace when he's had the opportunity to tonight. Dembuya, Vaccaro right back for the Sierra Leone native. Not exactly sure where Dembuya was trying to go with that pass, perhaps back for Vaccaro and Reno just giving right back to Phoenix. Half an hour gone here at Casino Arizona Field. Junior Flemings with the lone goal in the 20th minute as it stands. Phoenix Rising FC will win their 14th straight game. And will be nine points clear of first place in the Western Conference table. The Booyah's pass didn't have enough on it, broken up by Raul Mendiola. That's what you'll see from that far player on the Reno 1868. 442 Diamond is that the player on the weak side will tuck all the way in. You also have one of your strikers come back. There's a lot more movement defensively than people think if you are going to play some form of a 442. And Reno got away from it for a bit of a stretch. And do you have any answer as to why? Frustration, one of them. It all goes back to the Orange County game where they just got picked apart in that midweek matchup, match excuse me. And Ian Russell admitted that we had to switch things up and find a way to just put a grasp on the game a little bit. Sometimes that happens when everybody's not doing their job in this system, it gets away from you. Not only that, when they are trying to implement this man marking that we talk about and make reference to coming out of San Jose and Matias Almeida's squad, you've got a lot of principles kind of arguing with each other there where you want Sam Gleadle and Mendiola to tuck in a little bit and give you shape. Okay, but when their mark comes outside, you're telling me to go there. So you have to figure out where the responsibilities lie. Here's Brent Richards. Good step from Amadou Dia, but it'll fall for Lacroix. Lacroix will let it go, and Zach Lubin was teased just enough. They wanted to try to dive and just make sure. Takes a deflection, though, and a quarter kick coming up. If you can get this system right, this is kind of what you get out of it as well, where you can get a rotation on the holding midfielder side, but then someone can step up defensively. You see a lot of this out of New Mexico, where their outside backs actually invert themselves and throw themselves into the middle of the field, a la Josh Suggs. Exactly what Lacroix is trying to do. When the ball goes to the right, Guido can rotate in, Lacroix can step up, and to your point, you can turn it into a five or six man midfield. Towards the back post, one by Carroll, but not it away by Musa. 
Carroll back in and thumped away by Kevin Lambert. Lacroix. A lot of space for Richards. Now working on D. A great matchup here between two of the best outside backs in the league. Carroll trying to bend it in. Muscled away by Cochran again. And thanks to our friends at Jackson's Car Wash, you get a free car wash with every Phoenix Rising ticket. Visit phxrisingfc.com slash jacksons for more information. Carroll back in. Herzog pushing header and Cochran well done back to Zach Lubin. Terrific flick from Junior Flemings. Adam John now back for Junior Flemings. Shoulder to shoulder with Lacroix. The Jamaican back for Baccaro. Cochran patient. Lambert checks back to the ball. Lazy pass into Solomon Asante, but it was more intended, at least it looked like, for Brent Richards. That's some of the miscommunication we just talked about. That movement all started on the left-hand side. Corey Herzog wanted Sam Gleadle to step up higher. When he doesn't go, there's space coming out of the back for Dembuya, and then it's the quick little flick because the line is so deep. That allows Phoenix to get in back behind it. Still, they had success early on when they were switching the rate of play much quicker. Those long balls, the diagonals, dissecting the back line. They've gotten away from that a little bit, showing a different look here. Cochran did well. Plenty of time and space for Amadou Dia. Asante, back for the Frenchman. Dia now 1v1 with the 17 year old. Trying to get the better of Fuentes. Dia couldn't quite get around him, and fair play to Fuentes, who stood his ground the entire way. Amadou Dia is very tough to stay in front of, even when he had the ball at his feet. This is the deepest we've seen Gilbert Fuentes dropping back as well. He's going to have to do it against the speedster and Amadou Dia. Really well done by the teenager. One-on-one -on -one defending. Doesn't bite on any movement given to him. Dia tries to go for the Meg. The youngster's seen that before. He's usually gifting those to the opposition. He says, come on, man. You know better than that. Lacroix. Good ball in. Skips under the foot. Now Danny Masofsky. Good ball in for Musa. It's that last ball really lacking from a lot of the guys, to be honest. James Musa, you've seen it. Quick little flick from Solomon Asante. Javon Lambert had Lambert one get away from yeah. him. It's just that little flick of the foot, the outside of the foot, hasn't come off quite like we've seen it. Asante, full steam ahead, watch out. Putting on the brakes, now getting it on his right foot. Electric play from the Ghanaian. And the boys switching back to their initial sides. Junior Flemings and Solomon Asante just at the tail end. This is what you want, put it on the right foot, bring it inside, go one-on-one -on -one with them. Adam John rotating back over there. Very disciplined by the back line of Reno to just allow it to come to them. You expect the step to come a bit sooner. Matt Bersano asking his boys to stay nice and tight. If you're going to beat us, beat us from 20 plus yards out. It's exactly the way it was to play down.
Zach Carroll plays it back to Matt Persano. Carroll was actually on that 2016 New York Rebels two side that won both the Shield and the USL Cup when it was then called that. For those of you who don't know, it is now named the USL Championship Final. Vaccaro over for Flemings. Thought about it again, now it's Asante. Back for Flemings on the first time. Probably should have done better with that. Not a bad idea here from Phoenix. Wondering where the late run is out on the left-hand side. Obviously, Amadou Dia has his hands full. But look at all the space available in behind him. This is sometimes where you'd like to see a bit more out of the boys in the middle. Von Lambert, Adam John, all of them just kind of standing watching the beautiful movement at the top of the 18. That's where you can get Reno into trouble as well. Everybody's condensed themselves, and you have an opportunity. Just have to execute a bit better. Dabuya, referee says it was clean. It looked like initially he had caught Masovsky's leg. It was a dangerous challenge, and when you do go to ground like that, you have to get it absolutely right, and I'm not sure he did. And from behind, that, that's the key movement here is watch all the way back behind. That's a foul. That is a foul, 100%. He impedes the left leg. Don't care if he gets the ball. He impedes both legs, it looks like. Masowski back in. Cochran knots it away. Mendiola brings it down. Good look here for Reno. Mendiola still with it. Left-footed shot blocked in front by Mala and cleared away by Musa, but only as far as Seymour. Here's Brent Richards getting forward on the better side of Flemings, but the Jamaican able to track back nicely. Flemings getting into it. Richards turns. Brent Richards now just lashes it across, and Herzog was hoping to just flick it into the back of the net with Zach Lubin sprawled off of his line. And everybody will be able to take a deep breath. One-on-one -on -one defending, not exactly the biggest strong suit for Junior Fleming's game. Gets turned around, Brent Richards really well done. That's all you're asking, just a quick little ball to the near post. Corey Herzog trying to get cute here. In between the legs, little back post flick, can't get anything on it. Coming up at halftime, we're kicking it with your Phoenix CW. Phoenix Rising fans are some of the most dedicated in the league. At halftime, you'll see how one fan is expressing her love of the team in attack. That's coming up at the half. Any guesses? Jose Ball. <laughs> we love you, Jose. Easy Devon. Herzog trying to help it along. It'll be Fuentes after a positive first touch, and Dia cleans it up. It's been a couple of times tonight where Phoenix Rising defenders, particularly Dabuya and Dia, have had to come to the rescue of really what has been mistakes out of the midfield from Phoenix. A rare miscue there from Corey Herzog. Had a ton of work to do tonight. I'm sure it's hard to stop a couple of times, but hasn't really seen the best from Herzog, hasn't seen the best from Masovsky. Ian Russell saying that his frustrations with Danny Musovsky aren't really that present in their conversations that he's training well finally back into full fitness a little injury earlier this year but just waiting for him to have a breakout game he's yet to do so fortunately for them Corey Herzog has been on a ridiculous streak I mean just imagine where Reno would be if it wasn't for Herzog and listen Brian Brown's gone Brian Brown's gone but Corey Herzog hasn't exactly been a prolific goal scorer in this league for the past three or four years most of his best work is behind him, well behind him at this point. But 2016, this, this, this has been a really good year yeah. for him. And he went back-to-back -back seasons with three or four goals. Yep. Second season in Pittsburgh. Yeah. He did also have back-to-back double-digit seasons of goal scoring he there. He did. No, he definitely did. <laughs> and he basically led every single category there is known to mankind at Penn State. Yeah. assists on the year for the 29-year-old from 
Reading, Pennsylvania, who now sprays one over the far side, hoping for Gleedle. But Dabuya gets it right into the path of Vaccaro, but John gives it straight to Seymour, who now is running straight downhill, but his pass cut out by Amadou Dia. Watch out, lots of space here for Phoenix. Lampert, excellent pass for Junior Flemings on the other end. Puts it across, hoping for Solo, but it goes straight to Matt Rosano. Fleming's a little shaken up after the play. And that's the type of pass from Kevin Lambert that Phoenix has been just yearning for. Herzog, Mendiola on the turn, trying to get it on his right foot. Dia got a touch to it, now it's Mala. Here's Lambert again. Just a few minutes till halftime. Here's Solomon Asante, 1v1 with Lacroix. Trying to touch it through. Adam John has been relatively quiet tonight. Nothing quiet about this, though. What a ball. Beautiful coming out of the back. Junior Fleming streaking. And Brent Richards really high. Emma Clementa trailing on the backside with Solomon Asante. Get a bit lucky there. Herzog the other way, he's on side, 2v1 for Reno. Corey Herzog trying to get it over for Gleedle. Herzog a second bite of the apple and Dabuya gets in the way. He'll have nightmares about that one tonight if Reno don't get a result. Dabuya to the rescue again, but question marks all along the Phoenix back line as well as midfield. What a mess here for Corey Herzog. He is furious with himself and he should be. One on one, could go after Zach Lubin if he wanted to. He's got to do better in this situation. Danny Buzovsky is there. He has Gleedle on the back post. Take one touch up. Now you hit it, and he waits too long. There is so much space here for Corey Herzog. They should be level. I guess there is such thing as having too much time. Still credit to Dibuya. Massive amount to be done on the defensive side of things. Corner comes in all the way to the back post. Here's Clementa. Montenegro native, lofts it towards the back post, and Phoenix can see it out of play. Clemente has made stops at Los Angeles as well as Sacramento. A couple of stints with the Quails before landing in Reno. One thing you have to remember with Adam John is that relationship with he and Emre Clemente. Remember when Adam John was at San Jose, he got loaned to Sacramento a couple times, especially in that 2014 championship winning season. Emre Clemente, center back for the Quails back then. So he's definitely seen a lot of the tricks that Adam John is willing to throw at him. Doing a good job, the pairing of Clemente and Carroll just to outmark him so far. Cochran's header is in a negative fashion. Herzog cuts it back nicely. Now he lost it to the back post. Here's Wasowski, and Lubin might have gotten a piece of it, and it hits off the post. If Lubin did get a touch, that's one of the saves of the season. Here come Reno again. Lacroix. Bleedled out. Everybody defending for Phoenix as we're approaching halftime. Seymour just curling one in. It's got snow coming down on it. And Lubin can hold on to it. But what a chance for Reno. Breathe a sigh of relief after this one. Corey Herzog gets it right on the second time around. Beautiful ball lofted to the back post. Lubin does not get a touch. Danny Mazowski does a really good job heading this down. You forwards at home, exactly what you're supposed to do. Unfortunately, Lady Luck got in the way. Well, that's going to do it for the first 45 minutes between the number one and two teams in the Western Conference. Junior Flemings right now with the decider. Tenth goal of the season. It came in the 20th minute. Neither side has looked their best. Evan, what did you see? Midfield three of Phoenix Rising has to be better. Too many balls being given away unnecessarily. And for Reno 1868, just better communication when they move into the final third. Defensively, they've actually gotten a lot better as this match has gone on. Their shape is more impressive, but when they're going forward, they are lacking that clinical touch when they get into the final third. Well, we've had goals, we've had woodworks, we've had great crowds, and as always, we have dollar beers. One nil to Phoenix at halftime. You're kicking it with your Phoenix CW.
I'm Adam Waltz, and you're kicking it with your Phoenix CW. Phoenix Rising fans are a dedicated bunch. We all know that. So much so that we found one woman ready to get tatted up for her team. The Rising! Come on, boys! Don't you touch him! She's already solidified her spot as Phoenix Rising's super fan. Let's go! Hey! Monica McPherson goes to every rising match, owns almost every jersey, and is the loudest voice in the stands. Do that, don't you touch him! The next logical step. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. Monica's reaction to seeing her Phoenix Rising tattoo design for the first time. I'm in awe, it's amazing, I'm so excited. Her friend and tattoo artist Todd Ring, who is also a rising fan, created the design for Monica with her fierce side in mind. She wanted something definitely tough, something that would you know, represent her, represent the team. Shut up, you big girl! The tattoo shows a reaper donning a rising scarf surrounded by red smoke, one of Mon's trademarks. <laughs> For Todd, this tat is new ground. The first rising tattoo I've gotten to do so far. But Monica's Rising Reaper isn't the only team tattoo out there. No. About 35 minutes and the work is done. Oh this is the best part. That's fantastic. Although it's not Monica's first tat, every tattoo of hers is inked with a deep connection. Every tattoo I have definitely has a meaning. You know I follow this team for such a long time and they have me heart and soul, and what better way to represent that? Something I cannot take off. When we come back, highlights from around the USL. More kicking it right after this. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a few years old or dinosaur old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. At Arizona Federal, our passion is to help out the community where you live and work because where you bank should make you feel good. Show your support for the home team with the Phoenix Rising Visa Debit Card. When you open a new account, you can score $100 just for using your card when you shop. How's that for an easy goal? Be a part of our commitment to the community. Arizona Federal Credit Union. Mobile Mini is a lockdown defender. Have peace of mind using Mobile Mini guarding all of your valuables on site, at home, or at your business. Mobile Mini storage containers are made of 100% steel and maximize your protection with our patented Tri-Cam locking system that is camera-proof, cut-proof, and drill-proof. Proud partner of Phoenix Rising FC. can hit from here! Oh! <laughs> McCarthy once more! Blast it back in, and it's a goal for North Carolina FC! Big shot, and scores! And Ben Spees lets one fly, and drills it! Soto there, back, the shot, and in! Both ways, Soto, off the bench. 
Some stuff from League One and the championship, of course. Phoenix Rising FC, who are atop the championship at the moment, on top of Reno by a score of 1 to 0. Junior Flemings with the lone goal in the 20th minute, his 10th of the season, as Ian Russell and company have a lot to talk over at halftime. Let's take a look at some news and notes. Both playoff races on either side, particularly towards the bottom of the playoff picture, wide open. How about Francis Jacobs? Youngest male to sign professional contract in U.S. soccer history, 14 years old. Devin, I quiver in my shoes at the thought of what you were doing at 14 years old. And how about USL and Copa 90 teaming up to introduce Supporters Week in honor of some of the best fans that this country and this world have to offer from August 17th to August 24th. Let's keep it moving. Western Conference standings. We've looked at it once. Let's look at it again. Devin, I wanted to ask you this question. Are the top three set at this point? 100%. 100%? 100% they are set. Not even a chance? No. Simple. Okay. Even if the Monarchs win tonight? You don't get that out of me a lot. Yes, top three is set. It's okay. Done. Book it. Cool. What else you got for me? That's it. That's it. That's all I got. Well, there's plenty to sort out from spots four to ten then. But... For the rest of farther than that. <laughs> every every coach that's outside of the top three right now wants Devin Kerr's head, and quite honestly, I don't blame them. Phoenix 1-0 over Reno. We'll be back in a moment. Rising fans, we love it when you post to social media. Now, when you do, make sure you're using the hashtag RisingOnCW. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, we want to see your spirit. Hashtag RisingOnCW. You're watching Kicking It on your Phoenix CW. I'm Adam Waltz. When he was a kid, he wanted to play pro soccer. Now, that didn't work out, so he did the next best thing and bought part of the team. We caught up with Fallout Boy guitars and Phoenix Rising co-owner Pete Wentz in LA. MLS and all that stuff. <laughs> all that stuff is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we caught up with Fallout Boy guitarist and Phoenix Rising co-owner Pete Wentz at a recent match in LA. The growth has been really awesome to watch, but I think the growth that's most exciting is to see like the fan support and see the fan initiatives and see like the kids that are coming out. When he's not firing up fans from center stage, you can often find Pete Wentz center field decked out in his Phoenix Rising gear. The rock star fan turned front office famous face is always thinking soccer. The goal has to be, you know, having the best team uh, with guys that are psyched to be on the team and like a fan base that's psyched to be at the games. Dale, 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 He's appreciative of the fans and what they do for the team. You're seven hours away by, you know, driving, but everybody here is like psyched to be here, wants to be here, loud, still doing the chants, still has the banner, still have the flags, which is rad. So how is it for him rooting on Phoenix from his home in Hollywood? Do you get crap for loving on the Phoenix team here in LA? <laughs> <laughs> Do buddies give you a hard time? <laughs> a lot of, so I grew up in Chicago, so I guess a lot of my like friends in, at home uh, would 
probably give me grief, but I think they think it's like rad to be able to come out and like get on the field and run around. You know, like all the like perks and ben you know benefits of it are pretty cool. So for kicking it, I'm Chloe Marr. His friends won't be laughing at him for much longer, especially during this winning streak. Well, thanks, Pete, for talking to us in L.A. You're watching Kicking It on your Phoenix CW. Stay right there because we're back with the second half right after this. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a few years old or dinosaur old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. At Arizona Federal, our passion is to help out the community where you live and work because where you bank should make you feel good. Show your support for the home team with the Phoenix Rising Visa Debit Card. When you open a new account, you can score $100 just for using your card when you shop. How's that for an easy goal? Be a part of our commitment to the community. Arizona Federal Credit Union. Mobile Mini is a lockdown defender. Have peace of mind using Mobile Mini guarding all of your valuables on site at home or at your business. Mobile mini storage containers are made of 100% steel and maximize your protection with our patented tri-cam locking system that is camera proof, cut proof, and drill proof. Proud partner of Phoenix Rising FC. Almost ready for the second half here as the fans are trying to stay cool. And I have a feeling that the dollar beers that are flying all around Casino Arizona Field will have something to do with that. As well as the opening goal from Junior Fleming, which right now stands as the game winner in their 14th straight win. Devin, this is a great effort. Not this one, but the one in the 20th minute was a great effort. Looks almost the same, doesn't it, though? And it's exactly what they wanted. Junior Fleming's cutting in, and we said the long balls down into the channels would be vital ones. But then... What would you execute going forward with it? Both times, Junior Fleming's cutting inside to the right foot. Both times going to the far post. As you mentioned, 20th minute ends up in the back of the net. And Reno would then be able to muster up some chances of their own, but Junior Fleming's the third player on Phoenix Rising with double digits in goals and assists. And Solomon Asante would find some space tonight, but he still hasn't been able to really get going completely. There was about a five minute stretch where Junior Fleming said, come to the right, Solomon Asante to the left. And in order for him to have success, with all due respect to Solo, you know he doesn't have a left foot. So he's got to find a way to cut inside, put it on his right, just like Fleming's did on the goal. Reno then, they start to counter punch a little bit, get back into this. Well done by Richards on the right side, cutting it back across really thought that he might have been offside in this situation. Even though Dumbuya holds him on, does a good job tracking back in here. Corey Hartzog, got to do better. What are you thinking? Massive amount of space, takes too long. As you said, there can be too much time in a game. Doesn't make a quick enough decision, lets the chance get away. He would have told for his sins. Beautiful ball to the back post. Danny Mazowski, one, no. You thought it was the game tying goal. He beat Zach Lubin, but he could not beat that ridiculous woodwork sitting right in front of him. They're still down by one and a half. We thought initially that Lubin actually might have got a touch to it, but after further review, it was strictly simply Woodward. Here are the numbers after the first half. Devin, anything up here surprising? This is one of the fun games where I rarely say this, and this is why. 
tactically, these teams have figured each other out. It is all about execution right now. It is all about going out there and doing your job. Reno figured it out defensively. They sat in a better block. They started to explode going forward. They know where their channels are. Phoenix Rising had to find a way to break them down in different manners. John Beccaro started rotating out a little bit more. Now, with 45 minutes left, who can go out and execute with the chances put in front of them? And away we go in the second half as Mark Allerton gets us underway for the second 45 minutes. Again, Tyler Terrence, along with the ex-German pro, Devin Kerr, three points up for grabs in the Western Conference of the USL Championship between the number one and two teams in the West. And we already have a substitution. This is not surprising. Lindo and Becca coming on and replacing Gilbert Fuentes. It was only a matter of time before the South African was to come onto the field. He is probably one of the most underrated players, not only in the West, but in this entire league, as he replaces the 17-year-old. Which, to be honest, like to go to a bit sooner. Unfortunately, Lindo Mafeka still coming back from that quad injury he picked up. But he's a guy when he's in top form can really make a massive impact on a game. Unfortunately, he's been having to do it from the bench a lot. Like to work his way back into the starting eleven. Well done by Fuentes with his impressive but short stint at the senior Arizona field. That guy carries a lot more face than Gilbert Fuente has done. You'll see him help out defensively, but more importantly, he can play a much higher line when this team does get forward. You saw a lot of isolated situations where it was Corey Herzog and Wazowski running two at him. This will give them a chance to just create a bit more of a triangle up top. Sante with Laquad is back. Just dumps it over the top for Mustafa Dabuya, now working on Sam Gleedle. John, who was held really quiet in the first half. Lena did a great job of neutralizing him and not letting the entry passes come into the big man. We talked about how these teams have sort of figured each other out tactically. I think it's exacerbated in the case of Adam John. Rough challenge from James Moose as he called for the foul. That's hard for a player when you basically have been marked out of a match and your team still trying to find a way to get you involved in the run of play. But it all goes back to, Adam John said, the, we joked about it working into his contract, just gotta work a bit harder on the defensive side of things. You might not necessarily be the one that's going to be in the spotlight tonight on the offensive side of the ball, but you can still supplement in other areas. And also for Adam John, that you can't fade away. You get into these matches where Teams are putting two and three markers on you, not allowing you to find that space that Adam John has been so good at doing over the course of this 2019 season. If you only get one look at goal, what do you do with it? Four pass in the middle of the field. Phoenix looking to go the other way. Lambert got caught with it, just shrugs off Raul Mendiola. Mendiola probably giving up about five or six inches as well as 20 to 30 pounds in that matchup. Dia gives it away. Mendiola now touches it along for Mafeka. In for Masovsky. Bit of a heavy touch. Mala just trying to stab it away. Gleedle. Pulls it back, Masovsky again, he goes for goal. Shouts for a handball right in front of Mark Allerton. It's not a bad shout from Reno. It'll stay with the visitors. Lacroix, he clips it in looking for Masovsky. Potentially another handball there on Diaz. That goes off of Phoenix and a corner kick coming up for Reno. Take another look at that controversial call. Mark Allerton had a front row seat to it. Just inside the 18, as this ball comes back across. Lidl, he has Mafeka as well. That's a penalty. This is a penalty. Arm away from the body, right on goal. Keep an eye on the left hand, Abadudia, that's a penalty. 
right off his hand, extended away from the body inside the box. Phoenix get lucky. There was some controversy in the El Paso game because Drew Becky swatted a ball out of the air in the first 10 minutes or so. Phoenix ended up getting rewarded as what you could view as a makeup call for what would be the game winning goal as Masovsky had all sorts of daylight and somehow ends up trying to finish it off with his thigh. It was at an awkward height, but he has to do better here. And it's funny when you listen to Ian Russell talk about him, and oh, he's not lacking confidence, he's training really well. Seven goals in 17 appearances when he was loaned last year from San Jose. They make it official only two and 15 this year. You can get an idea that when these things are putting themselves in front of him, he just can't close it out. Musa looking long for Adam John. Lefeka gets it back from Mendiola, now in for Masovsky. Reno cooking here. Herzog, great challenge from Dumbuya. The Sierra Leone Superman does it again for Phoenix. Sasante can't keep it in play, but Mustafa Dabuya, after that really bad giveaway in the first five minutes, has been playing out of his mind. Fourth time this match where if he didn't get into that tackle, that's a goal. Easy. Very well done by Dabuya on that far side once again. And he's always done it outside of the right back position where he's tucked himself back in and tried to help out on the defensive side. Maybe the spacing was just a bit off by the center backs. Continues to be an absolute force at the back for Phoenix. One of the few players on this roster who's not scored a goal yet, though, in the 2019 campaign. Hard to believe is 13 of them able to do that this year. 17 is the club record. Here's Lacroix running right at Dumbuya. Lacroix gets it on his left, still Dumbuya gets in the way of it again. Here's Masovsky, and it's in for Reno. Danny Masovsky levels it up here at Casino Arizona Field. Reno finally get their breakthrough. They probably deserved it over the past five minutes. 1-1 one, one in the 53rd. Plenty of chances for Danny Mazowski over the course of this season, and it just has not gone right for him. They loved him when he was on loan last year. So many opportunities in this match. Just moments ago, we were saying how you could see the confidence just drifting away from their number nine. This one just sits up real nicely, though, just outside the top of the six, coming back across the body. No one in a rising uniform steps up into it. Space to be had. Muzowski takes advantage of it. And just like that, you can feel the energy shift. The visitors have a little bit more pep in their step. Zach Lubin forced to concede a corner as Kevin Lambert did not do him any favors on that pass. game winning streak Phoenix have had to muster up six different second half game winners and if they want to move it to 14 they'll need a seven big sigh of relief for Danny Masovsky as well if Reno can get him going they can most certainly Make a run at Phoenix for the top spot in the West. AJ Cochran rising above the pack for the header. Lefeka brings it down. Lacroix sizing it up. Sending it wide. Both of the goals by Benny, who's off to this year. Prior to that third one on the season, back in June. 2-1 victory. And they were at Portland Timbers 2 on the 27th. 
11 days earlier. They did battle when Los Dos came to town, took them down 4-2. Funny how he had been the quiet one. Corey Herzog, balls down into his feet. More decision making. There was the great cross as we showed you in the highlights at halftime. Long ball to the back post, well done by Mazowski. to try and get it on frame and Woodwork got in the way. by Reno, here comes Baccaro. Flemings to his left, he gives it over for Junior Flemings. Lambert, letting the ball do the work, did well to get away from Lacroix. Bit too far though, now Dabuya on the first time, lofting it in. Had it won by Brent Richards, moves it back in. Now it's Clementa up for it. Lambert thought about hitting it on the first time, a heavy first touch, and Clementa comes away with it. Now it's Masovsky on the other end, 1v1 with Mala. Good challenge from Luigi Mala. Just stuck out that back leg nine times out of ten. That doesn't come off, but you just saw the one instance. And it's beautiful when you do connect on it. Flemings. Sante now wants to run right at Lacroix. Big touch towards the byline. The delivery well over the backside. John sprinting to try to keep it in play and able to do so. Good hustle for the big man. Baccaro along for Dia. Take it down in the box. It should be a penalty, and it will be. Great run out of the back from Amadou Dia. Reno get it all wrong, and Phoenix will have yet another opportunity from the penalty spot to try to snag a second half game winner. Still plenty of time to go, but Phoenix will get their shot. Self-inflicted wounds. That's what Ian Russell told us about last game's issues against San Antonio FC. The 4-1 loss said specifically three of the goals were mistakes brought on by themselves against themselves and just poor decision making. Same thing here from Raul Mendiola. Lovely movement by Phoenix. Some of the best we've seen all game. John McCarrow got this thing started. Then working back around the ball into Amadou Dia. Mendiola on the short end of the stick going to ground. Would probably say unnecessarily. If you leave your feet, you better believe you get it right. He gets it all wrong. Solomon Asante from the spot to put him ahead. How about Adam John, who's had a woeful night from a production standpoint, making that 40-yard run across the field to keep the ball in play and keep the opportunity alive. Now Solomon Asante for the penalty spot again. Nobody has been more sure-footed from the spot. Asante does it again! Unshakable is the Ghanaian. Phoenix lead in the 59th, it's 2-1 here in the desert. One of the biggest issues you have to deal with when it comes to challenging penalties against Solomon Asante is there's no rhyme or reason to where he's gonna go. This is stuff that a lot of the guys from set piece opportunities take a lot of pride of what Didier Drogba passed on to him. They would stay after training sessions for hours on end, ball after ball. Same thing with Solomon Asante. He goes left, he goes right, gives you so many different looks. Sometimes he's got the little hop, sometimes it's hit with his laces. This time, bottom left corner, buried by Solomon Asante. The golden boot race leader. A bit more breathing room from Daniel Rios, but more importantly, and only importantly, 2-1 over Reno. And it's time for the Sonic Happy Hour, brought to you by Sonic and your new favorite drink, the Red Bull Slush. You have a rising player, scores during the 60th minute, one lucky fan will win a $500 gift card to Sonic, as this is sent in and all the way across, and it almost was a Sonic Happy Hour goal, as Adam John could have gotten a touch to it, but it flashed across. For more info, visit phxrisingfc.com slash Sonic. Too much action for all of these reads, but we got to get them in. Adam John, you got to get a touch on it. You got to get it in, big fella. Dabuya on the right side. 
This is what Phoenix does. We said it earlier, next five minutes, so vitally important for both teams. Phoenix continue to go after this squad. And just as a reminder, Sonic's new Red Bull slush was a no-brainer. Slushes are a crowd favorite. Red Bull is a crowd favorite. Hurry into Sonic for your new favorite drink as Sonic Happy Hour comes to an unhappy close. McNero trying to bring it down. Straight into Zach Carroll. Look at the motor from Baccaro trying to lock down three different Reno players. Rebecca stopped by Junior Flemings in his tracks. Now it's John. Kevin Lambert. Now wide for Dambuya. Half an hour to play. Lambert goes back for Dambuya. It's brilliant football, but a save off the line. Dambuya again! It's a first for Mustafa Dabuya, and it's in front of the south end. Phoenix lead three to one. Took him a bit. One of the few in the 11 tonight that has not hit the back of the net this year. Done a good job all night long. We talked about the extra defensive effort he put in. Sweet little back heel by Lambert. His distribution has been nothing short of spectacular. How clever is this for the Jamaican overlapping run? And it's not the first, second, a little messy but he'll take it any way he can get it outside of the right foot, bottom corner. Two goals, two minutes, Phoenix out in front by two. And look what it means to the veteran from Sierra Leone. There's only a few players on this Phoenix team who have put in the kinds of shifts that Mustafa has put in this season on a consistent basis. And given his defensive performance tonight, why not get rewarded with a goal? Unbelievable stuff. Just 10 minutes ago, we were talking about the momentum swing. Reno gets their equalizer in the 53rd minute from Danny Mazowski. And all of a sudden, you just felt this belief. Is the streak in jeopardy? What are Phoenix going to react going forward? Corey Herzog and Danny Mazowski started to get going. Ian Russell frustrated on the sideline. He's looking for some help. Looks like Saeed Haji will be coming on. And then back-to-back -back goals in the form of Solomon Asante from the penalty mark. And Mustafa Dumbuya, as you just saw, the deflection coming off of Rosano's initial save. Great follow-up. The boys in black are back out in front. going to be Zayed Haji coming on and Raul Mendiola coming off. He was starting to cramp after the challenge on Amadou Dia that led to the Salomon Asante penalty kick goal. And Haji onto the scene here in the 64th and you can just tell the body language, momentum, air has just been totally sucked out of this Reno side. Kid's got some wheels. He likes to run Said Haji. Another one of the players that was in the starting 11 last week that Ian Russell told us about on loan from San Jose was actually the number two pick in the MLS draft. Coming out of New England and VCU. Former Ram is a guy who likes to, similar to what you see out of Junior Flemings and Solomon Asante, really go after players. One on one situations, you do wonder defensively. Can he replicate what you get out of the likes of Sam Pleadel, Raul Mendiola, not his best effort. Had pretty much a five minute window where you saw some good things out of him. Otherwise, got picked apart on that right side.
his next two games. Once this winning streak really got cooking, once it was 10, 11, a lot of fans were circling their calendars and be like, that's probably where it's going to end with Reno and Sacramento both coming to town. Might not be a loss, but it could be a draw. Right now, it certainly looks like they'll get over one of the two humps that stand in their way of really stretching this thing to astronomical proportions. Plenty of time left in this game. Reno more than capable of scoring in bunches. Now we're, we've not seen that Reno in quite some time. At least against a true quality side. But we also do have to keep in mind this is a dollar beer night for whatever reason. The numbers between dollar beer nights and non-dollar beer nights are absolutely staggering. This year, there have been three matches when Bud Lights have been going for a buck apiece. They're averaging just a shade under five goals a game, allowing a little bit more than .3 as Reno are on the move here. Mafeka fakes the first shot. Mafeka going for goal, and it's just laced over the bar. Zach Lubin not happy about the poorest defense from his group in front of him. And little Mafeka almost cut the lead in half. Mafeka came on as a substitute at halftime. And is starting to put his South African stamp on this game. Certainly got AJ Cochran to bite, hit the deck. Great little shifty move from a really dynamic number 10 in this league. But more on the dollar beer night stats, averaging .33 goals allowed per game, margin of victory a shade over four. Now non-dollar beer nights, eight matches, still less than three goals a game. Averaging a goal allowed per game and a little under two of their average margin of victory. It's not bad. Where is where is the <laughs> sense in that? Where, where do you connect those dots? We can go throughout the entire streak, to be honest, all 12 games, 40 goals, 3.3 a game. They're right on the mark right now again. You have to also realize that, think about the home field advantage. Is it the home field advantage or is it the short week? And it's the short week that the visitors have to more endure than the home side. Both Ian Russell said that as well. He said this is one of the more difficult places to come play. And I said, look, you've only been here a couple times. Why is it so different? He said, it's the fans. There are plenty of places you can go and the fans are loud and you can get into a game. But that place, it is so negative against the visiting squad. Here's Gleadal, he stumbles, and it totally breaks up the attack for Reno. And that's why they've been on a, not just their 13 game win streak. Their last loss was, when I were there for that, the October 13th, one nothing loss to T2. Poor giveaway from Bersano, here's Adam John, around Bersano, now tries to pull it back. Oh, goodness me, Adam John. Not his night by any stretch of the imagination. And if that little snapshot isn't indicative of what's been going on for the entirety of the 69, I don't know what is. Got a feel for him. Well done by Solomon Asante. Adam John just dropped back in when he recognized the press coming on the right side. This is Christmas has come early for you, my friend. Got to do better. Put it on frame, anything. The only person in your way is Zach Carroll. He knows that they got really lucky. This should have been four for Phoenix. Aiden Apodaca comes on and replaces Danny Masofsky, former Bethlehem Steel man, came over in the offseason and was a really solid pickup for Ian Russell. Four goals in 11 appearances. All of them have come off the bench. Three of them have come in the second half. Obviously, substitutes are usually going to happen in that manner. But this is a guy. I want to go back to that Orange County game once again. Got only his first start of the season against them. That game got away. He had to switch the midfield. Aiden came off the field really depressed, and he said, keep your head up. This is not about you. This is a tactical decision, trying to find a way to get us back into the match. That's exactly what he's going after right now. Will Seymour did not jump on that, and it created a very dangerous situation for Adam John. Looks like he just got the wind knocked out of him more than anything, but... 
play nothing too serious for John, who, while he hasn't had his best night, has still done some of the little things that have allowed Phoenix to be successful as we have less than 20 minutes remaining now. And with Fresno leading the Monarchs right now by a score of 1 to 0 in the 70th, thanks to Jaime Chavez's goal, who's on an absolute tear at the moment. Phoenix are seven points clear of the Foxes. Adam John appears to be all right. And Jose Aguinaga is getting set to come on and he'll replace John Baccaro. Rick Johns hustles over to the midway line to give Adam John some instruction. Jose Aguinaga, pat on the fanny. And John Baccaro, who did a solid job tonight, certainly much better than what we saw against El Paso. Still not one of his best nights, but even defensively, he just looked very mobile tonight. It's getting better. Shots telling us that you have to remember this is a workload that his body has not had to endure in his short but impressive professional career. Coming out of his time in college, winning the Ackerman Award at Wake Forest with Bobby Muse doing a good job of just continuing the growth of the youngster. Came in, a couple lone stints, couldn't find a home for himself, and Hit that gray area that you see with a lot of players where you're on Loma team, you're back with an MLS squad and can't break in. He just didn't have a lot of games underneath his belt. Rick Sean said that we needed to do a better job of managing his minutes and understanding all the metrics that go into these guys. It's something that they really pride themselves on, Phoenix Rising. It's all the numbers, the breakdowns, the analytics of the game. We've referenced it before how each individual coach has their responsibility at the tail end of a game where they'll finish things off. Rick will go into the numbers. Pete Ramage will do video review. Let's go goalkeepers, set pieces, all of it. Breaks down into one big package to set up for the next opponent. Lemmings was trying to wiggle his way out of serious trouble there. Musa with the challenge. Asante along for Aguinaga. Solo gets stood up by Will Seymour. That's an excellent challenge from the Colorado Springs native. And we're hearing that the Monarchs have tied it up over at Chuck Chansey. So it's 1-1 between the Foxes and Salt Lake City. Becca on the turn. Good ball here. Apataka all the way across, and it's Herzog. Reno have one back. It's a one goal game with a little bit more than 15 minutes remaining. And it's a dozen on the year for Corey Herzog. Way too easy for Reno if you're Rick Schatz in Phoenix. Where's Dembuya on the back post? Totally misses the marking here. Got to tuck himself in. Luigi Mala rotating into the space. Felt like Corey Herzog was in an offside position, but really well done by Reno. Prototypical movement from Corey Herzog up top, who more often than not can turn into a goal poacher, and he does not mind that whatsoever. You don't get many ones that are as simple as that. Aguinaga. Asante, great couple of moves, creates some space. Lambert trying to bring it down, using that long stride to win the ball back. Aguinaga trying to get stuck in, cleared away by Lacroix, but only as far as Dambuya. Keep an eye how deep Aiden Abadaka has come back in in the midfield to help out a little bit. He's dropping much further back than Danny Mazowski was. A 
one by Musa. Seymour comes away with a bit of a heavy touch out. Almost too much to Aguinaga. And it goes all the way back for Matt Bersano. Phoenix Rising continue to go back and forth with New York Rebels too for the league lead for goal scored this season. As Aguinaga, Colin Adam Chan was making that run towards the right side, but again back for Matt Bersano. And Phoenix need to be really careful here. Certainly given Reno a lifeline. Herzog getting on the better side of Cochran. Touches it along. Dia thought about going to ground, thinks better of it. Beats Herzog to the ball, but a corner kick coming up for Reno. And this will give them an opportunity to see if they can continue this momentous comeback. At least they hope. Emmer Clemente coming up. Zach Carroll just coming into your picture at the tail end of things. Mafeka in that left foot of his on full display. Good ball in. Lambert is first to it. Here's Clemente. Big touch, one by Adam John, and just pokes it along for Junior Flemings into space. Aguinaga making a big run out of the midfield. Flemings hangs onto it, cutting inside, working on Gleedo, pushes it out wide for Solomon Asante. Lambert making a run out of the midfield now as well. In for Lambert, trying to get a touch to it. Was he taken down in the box? Yes, he was. Another penalty to Phoenix. Well, this is much more controversial than the first one. Mark Allenton is getting an earful from the likes of Will Seymour and Duke Lacroix. Devin Curry, your thoughts? The first one was quite simple. Merle Mendiola going to ground. That's the run coming forth on the outside left. This time they go down the right flank. This ball gets sprayed through. The long legs of Kevin Lambert. Just look at him gliding through, tracking back. Not the best first touch. The left arm gets him in trouble. That's why the referee's going after it. Keep an eye on the left leg, trailing back behind. It's a penalty. Well done by the referee. Look at the left leg. Steps on the right foot of Kevin Lambert, takes him to ground. Then there's the shoulder shrug as well. Overextends the left arm 100%. This is going to the spot. Here we go again. This time to restore Phoenix's two goal lead. Solomon Asante once more from the spot. Different side, same result. It's never in question when number 20 steps up to the spot. And now it's number 18 for Solomon Asante. Phoenix restored the two goal lead. A little bit more than 10 to play. So difficult the second time around. This is much more on the shooter than it is the goalkeeper. Mind games galore. And Salman Asante just steps up. We said he gives you so many different looks. With authority from the Ghanaian. Says this is chess, not checkers, my friend. What a penalty going the other direction by Salman Asante. Solomon Asante, one more time, just for good measure. Phoenix lead four to two. And how about this? Peter Lee Vassell coming in for James Musa. It was announced, what, about no more than 24 hours ago or so that he was added to the roster on loan from LAFC. And keep this in mind, whether or not it has any bearing on Phoenix going on this run or not, we'll never truly know. But since Phoenix has stopped using players on loan from LAFC, it has been night and day compared to what we saw at the beginning of the season. They have not used an LAFC player in a lineup in an 18, what have you, since Tristan Blackman back on April 21st against Tacoma Defiance. But here comes Peter Lee Vassell 
of Jamaica. He got some playing time with the Reggae Boys in Gold Cup this summer. Not much, but he adds some depth to the midfield for sure. Got a massive amount of talent. A guy that Bob Bradley compared to. See a little fun on the far side. Let's speed things up a little bit. Compared him to Mark Anthony Kay in the midfield. Former Louisville standout that has obviously made his way to the West Coast, done well for himself. Peter Lee Vassell saying that he has taken a liking to him, considers him one of his mentors, and a guy that's just looking for playing time, to be honest. Was the Caribbean Combine MVP that the MLS holds every single season. Actually trialed in Norway back in 2018 in the fall of October, where he followed Damian Lowe, the other Jamaican defender who got some repetitions at Gold Cup. Things didn't work out there. But as we've talked about it before, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Seymour looking for an option as his hands up, as if to indicate that it doesn't have any. And this ball is angled too close to Zach Lubin. Save thousands of dollars when you buy or sell your home. Homie gives you the support to buy or sell your home without charging the 6% commissions. It's a flat $1,500 to sell your home no matter what the price of the home is. Go to homie.com to learn more. Naga, Vassal getting a touch, back for the Spaniard. It's the 1-1 over in Northern California between the Monarchs and the Foxes. How about OKC Energy FC taking a 3-2 lead after going down 2-1. Lambert dangerous there going to Asante. Mala cleans it up for Phoenix. Dia keeps it on the deck. Good ball to find Aguinaga. Now it's Solomon Asante now. Running it through, Aguinaga, positive first touch. Still with it. Vassal, Asante, just going for goal. Didn't have nearly enough steam behind it. Persano will go quickly with the drop kick, trying to find Corey Herzog, but he just runs out of play right into the Phoenix technical area. Persano gets really lucky at the top. He almost walks right out of the box with the ball in his hands. Quick little half volley to try and Spring the transition going the other direction. With James Musa coming off, you are seeing Kevin Lambert dropping back deeper in midfield. He will now occupy the out and out number six spot. Vassal just stepping up with the other substitute, Aguinaga. Great that inverted triangle in the middle that Phoenix has become so accustomed to. now making it very difficult for Ian Russell's side to break them down. Richards, early delivery, handled by Lubin. Get your tickets now for the Rising's next home match on Friday, August 23rd against Sacramento Republic. Visit phxrisingfc.com for ticket info. It's always fun when those two teams meet. Usually no goals to be had at Papa Murphy's Park when they meet, but a little bit different here at Casino Arizona Field. Dollar Beer Night is the chant that rings throughout Casino Arizona. It's a movement, it's a sensation, it's a fad. It's downright inexplicable. It's cheap. remaining plus stoppage time. These fans have seen four goals. They've seen 44 on Dollar Beer Night altogether. What a 
contribution Phoenix has gotten out of Mustafa Dumbuya, not only tonight, but since they picked him up in the offseason. Peter Lee Vassell just gliding forward. Nobody's stepping to him just yet. Here's Aguinaga now. Makes the first shot, now tries to go for goal. Deflected by Duke Lacroix. Should be last touch off of Reno and a corner for Phoenix. Jose Aguinaga about a half step away from his second goal of the year. This is all Peter Lee Vassell. Started with Solomon Asante on the backside. Similar to the goal by Junior Flemings. If you're gonna give him the space, just take it. They're gifting it to you. Continues to run forward. Lovely little ball movement coming out of the back. He looks like he is so composed on the ball. Does not get flustered whatsoever. And notice Phoenix not throwing a lot of numbers into the box. More than happy to just maintain possession and see this game out. Now let me ask you this question because you were pretty stern in answering it at halftime. If the top three are set and the difference between them was nine points, if the Fresno result holds and it's a draw, the difference between Phoenix and Fresno and Reno is nine points. Is first place settled? Would probably say yes. Not as definitive. Not as, as definitive. Yeah, not as definitive. Um, with Reno and Fresno, I've seen what they're capable of. You've seen a little bit of it tonight. Not the best from Reno, but they've shown you some glimpses of what they can do. And they're not all playing Phoenix. You know, you're, you're taking on, with all due respect, some of the minnows of the Western Conference. You can go after teams like the Las Vegas Lights, like Colorado Springs, Tulsa and Tacoma, and, and pick up some easy points down the stretch. The thing for Phoenix is they don't have that luxury. You take a look at their schedule coming down and, and who they're gonna challenge. They've got a lot of work to do. Finish off Reno tonight, Sacramento Republic next week. Then yeah, they've got the quote unquote two, we'll call them easy games. They're still on the road though. You gotta go to the Pacific Northwest against Tacoma, Colorado Springs, but Darren Powell, San Antonio, they look a lot better. Los Dos, we've seen what they can do. You go to Fresno at New Mexico, at T2, home Real Monarchs. Those are four really difficult games in a row. Brent Richards back for Corey Herzog. He's taken down from behind. And a good set piece opportunity coming up for Reno here. In the 89th minute, down two goals. from the Western Conference games that are going on tonight. OKC Energy FC grab an insurance goal, now lead four to two over Cameron Knowles' side. What a result that's gonna be for Steve Cook's group. Christian Biaga, nobody <laughs> said nobody ever. <laughs> said nobody ever, 86 minute, thank you. Herzog, not a bad effort. Got the water bottles to jump up, got Zach Lubin to dive to his left, but quite hit the frame. So that'll put OKC Energy FC at 33 points, sitting in seventh. But nothing is comfortable. From teams who are sitting in fifth to 10th. It's a two point discrepancy. You can go all the way down to 14th in the Western Conference right now. Orange County. I'd, go 50, I'd still give that RGV has a shot of getting in. Was just going to make the six point gap reference, but still, sure. you can go to nine. Yeah. I mean, that is insane. Fifth place to 15th within nine points. Well, that's what the play in game will do. Even, even if that wasn't the case, there's still not that much big of a difference, but the nine and 10 spots make it always so that your team is more times than not going to have a shot basically into the last few weeks of the season. To give you an idea of how different this is from the east to the west, nine points from fifth to 15th. If you go from fifth in Indy 11 to 10th, Birmingham Legion, 14 points. Three minutes of stoppage time to be added on. Gleedle, broken up by Peter Lee Vassell. He's done really well since coming on. 
is all about earning your spot on this Phoenix Rising side. And Peter Lee Vassell is certainly making a case for more appearances off the bench at the very least. This one pushed into space for Brent Richards, but look at the pace from Junior Flemings, even in the 91st minute. This one stays in play, though. Brent Richards now clips it in, but straight at Zach Lubin. And the Montana man falls on top of it. And it looks like another three points are in the back pocket for Phoenix Rising. After the match on your Phoenix CW, it's Masters of Illusion. Dean Kane hosts this magical mashup of magicians, illusionists, and escape artists. That's coming up right after the game. Taken down by Seymour. Are you still concerned about the Sacramento, Sacramento game for Phoenix? Yes. Given the history within that matchup, absolutely. Okay. But this restores faith in form. This is the best we've seen them play in four or five matches. You have to go back to the Austin game where they just really struggled in the first half and dismantled that team in the second half. And that was more so Sion McFarlane getting sent off than anything. I mean, it shouldn't have gotten to six, but Sion McFarlane got hurt. Yes, excuse me. Excuse Center me. back. Yeah. Flemings. We talked about the ridiculous run for Phoenix coming down the stretch. Reno has those games spaced out. They'll go home now. Three matches in a row. T2, Fresno, Tacoma. Just one opportunity down the stretch here. Herzog sends that one into the parking lot. They do have four games on the road at Austin. Not an easy one. That's one of the tougher places to play in the West. September 20th, the Lab Isotopes Park at New Mexico United. Home Real Monarchs, home El Paso. You talked about OKC earlier. They actually let their attacking midfielder, Lexi Bassetti, go. He's now with the locomotive. Interesting little Straight one up two combination. For Derek Ebard, yep. yep. And then they finish off Las Vegas Lights, Tulsa Roughnecks. That's going to do it. Phoenix Rising Football Club. 14 wins in a row and counting. Solomon Asante a brace. Mustafa Dumbuya, his first goal in a Phoenix Rising kit. And this group out in the desert simply cannot be stopped at the moment. Plus 38 goal differential on this magical run. And they continue to find more magic week in and week out. At times it was in doubt. Reno got one late to make it 3-2, but then Solomon Asante steps up to the penalty spot for a second time tonight and gets Matt Bersano guessing any which way. Mustafa Dambuya put on a clinic tonight defensively, and he got rewarded for his efforts on the offensive end as well. We were talking about his goal-scoring drought in coming on, and he is our mobile mini man of the match, Devin. He was nothing short of sensational tonight. When the back line got it wrong, Dabuya always got it right. Did a really good job of helping out on the weak side of things, one-on-one -on -one battles, tackles from behind, things down in the channel. He would get the opportunity on the back post. He would actually come on the second strike on the deflection, but defensively was really where he earned his stripes tonight. Really difficult decisions that had to be made. Never want to see a defender go to ground inside the box unless you are absolutely certain you can get to it first. He does it. And how about the tenacity on the mental side of things? Can't get the first one off. The back three had rotated back over for Reno, and Dabuya just continued his progression. Finally gets a goal in a Phoenix Rising uniform. And that smile says it all for Mustafa Dabuya. Phoenix Rising to it again on dollar beer night. Something about Casino Arizona Field and when Bud Lights are flying for a buck a pop, they simply can't be stopped at the moment. We'll head to break and put a bow on it when we come back.
At Arizona Federal, our passion is to help out the community where you live and work because where you bank should make you feel good. Show your support for the home team with the Phoenix Rising Visa Debit Card. When you open a new account, you can score $100 just for using your card when you shop. How's that for an easy goal? Be a part of our commitment to the community. Arizona Federal Credit Union. We're Carvana, the company who invented car vending machines and buying a car 100% online. Now we've created a brand new way for you to sell your car. Whether it's a few years old or dinosaur old, we want to buy your car. So go to Carvana and enter your license plate, answer a few questions, and our techno wizardry calculates your car's value and gives you a real offer in seconds. When you're ready, we'll come to you, pay you on the spot, and pick up your car. That's it. So ditch the old way of selling your car and say hello to the new way at Carvana. Another week, another three points. Phoenix Rising FC get it done to the tune of four to two against Reno 1868. If the Fresno Monarchs result holds, they will be nine points clear at the top of the Western Conference. Zach Lubin didn't really have many saves to make it tonight, if any. So that means our Whataburger save of the match is going to go to our mobile miniman of the match. And that's Mustafa Dabuya. Just give him the keys to the kingdom. The way that he played tonight, he deserves it. Man of the match for sure. Save of the match, of course. Really difficult as a defender to leave your feet in a one-on-one -on -one situation in the middle of the box with loads of space in front. Dabuya with a beautiful tackle in from behind, reaching back across, gets the best of Corey Herzog. That wasn't the only one of the night, but it was probably one of the more important ones as Reno started to gain some momentum in the start of the second half. They got their tying goal, and then what could they do with it? But it all started with Junior Flemings in the 20th minute. Beautifully cut inside, right foot, far post, 1-0 Phoenix Rising. Junior Flemings getting his 10th of the year. And it certainly got them off and dancing. But as we've seen time and time again, Phoenix will give you opportunities, and Reno would finally be able to make the most out of the ones that they were able to generate. And it's Danny Masowski, who we were giving a lot of grief for maybe not scoring too many goals. He gets a big one here for Reno. A difficult one to take down as well. Off the deflection, left footed, coming back across the body. Loads of traffic. Still manages to get enough on it to push it back. And you felt the visitors. Okay, here it comes. You're at 1-1. This is going to be the night that the Kings of the Western dethroned. Not the case. Amadou Dia had a rough one, to be honest. His counterpart, Dimbuya, did not. He bailed him out quite a few times. This one, good overlapping run. Referee points to the spot. It is a penalty. Solomon Asante, bottom left corner. They're back out in front. They're not done, though. Two minutes later, Tabuya, here's his first goal in a Phoenix Rising uniform. Overlapping run, just like Amadou Dia, but it's the ball from Kevon Lambert. Clever little back heel that gets the outside marking back in. And just a beautiful finish to follow up and put into the far post. Phoenix were back in front by two. Calm, cool, and collected from the outside back. You'd have no idea that he hadn't scored a goal yet this season. And then Reno just waltzed in. Corey Herzog, his 12th on the season. Give him a dozen. Great ball from Aiden Apodaca, and you thought that we had a game. Took 13 minutes for the response to come from the visitors, but it did come from Corey Herzog. And you thought, okay, here we have another chance. Questionable at first, 100% a penalty on the second time around. Lacroix gets away from it. We said it's so difficult as a penalty taker when you have to go against the goalkeeper in back-to-back -back spots in the same game. Just sends Versano going the other direction. A lot of frustration by the goalkeeper. And there you have it. Not only is Phoenix Rising currently out in front by nine. They got two games in hand. So there you have it. Phoenix Rising not only keeping the winning streak going, not only keeping the winning streak going on Tyler Beer night, but just getting it done in the table. Nine points clear. And look at the difference between the top three and the rest of the Western Conference playoff picture. As Devin mentioned earlier, these are your top three. Still a home playoff game up for grabs after the play-in spots. 
win seven through 10. We'll take each other on later on this year, but Phoenix Rising FC with all sorts of work to do coming up on the horizon. They'll be home against the Quails, then they'll travel to Tacoma Defiance. Well, they're up two out of their next four on the road. They'll be home against Colorado Springs. They certainly owe them one from earlier in the year when they drew them. It's Joan with the late equalizer in the 91st minute, and they'll be home against San Antonio FC, who they drew on the first game of the year. Funny coming into that match as well that the administration for Phoenix Rising said that they felt in the Western Conference, San Antonio might be their biggest threat. They went on a big slouch, but they look mighty fine. Now, Darren Powell has his boys playing some good football. Great matchup in the future. Well, it was a dollar beer night, but against the second best team in the Western Conference. So naturally, there were going to be a lot of question marks. They were answered. And then some Solomon Asante a brace. Junior Fleming's his 10th goal this season. And of course, Mustafa Dumbuya getting his first goal of the year. Phoenix Rising, 4-2 winners over Reno for our entire crew and Devin Kerr. Tyler Terrence saying so long for now, and thanks for tuning in. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.